the CarPlay and digital car keys stuff was kind of cool. I'll give them that. The first vehicle that's going to feature uh, this capacity, this capability, the BMW 5 Series for 2021. And essentially what this is, is a digital car key. People who have electric vehicles have experience with this to a certain degree. But this is interesting because it's a third-party integration. Mm -hmm. It makes sense. Tesla can do it. It's their car. In this case, this is not Apple's car. And it's not BMW's phone or app. I don't know. There's some there's some integration that has to happen. They got to work together a little bit because essentially you're generating these digital keys. And this is where my mind goes with the security stuff. Man, you better cross your T's and dot your I's. Mm -hmm. For boys both and, companies, I guess. Boys right? and girls, ladies and gentlemen. But anyways, they do a quick demo. And believe it or not, the demo works in the pre-recorded incredible production that Apple put together. Uh, it was a big surprise to me that it worked out. There she is. She's responsible. So she takes the, the app. She creates, generates the digital car key, taps her iPhone up against the door handle. She's in. She's wirelessly charging her phone. She's hopping into Apple CarPlay, living the Apple lifestyle, and very happy about it. Might I add in her BMW 5 Series with the push-button start. Hmm. You see how it goes well? Very seamless. Yeah, yeah. Very that's cool. Right. You Basically, what happens is you listen to Apple, you get a BMW 5 Series. You watch their keynote, you buy into the ecosystem, and somehow there's a BMW 5 Series parked in your driveway. Well, I'm sold. You see how that association works, though? Yeah. Right? It is a BMW 5 Series. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, those are comfortable-looking seats over there. The other cool thing, you can create multiple keys. So you can invite people. She cracks a joke at this moment right here, saying, I don't know if I should give Craig yeah. the full opportunity here. Maybe I should treat him like a teenager. <laughs> the teenager. Yeah, teenager status on the Restricted. digital car key. Then when <laughs> Craig gets the actual notification he got a key, he's like, full access to. Amazing. Seamless. Seam. <laughs> now he, I mean, he's never going to drive that 5 Series BMW. This guy, what do you think he actually drives? Um, his own Apple car. Yeah, it's Probably. unreleased Apple car. Pri uh, private jet. Mm -hmm. A helicopter. I don't know. Anyway, so they talk a little bit about this consortium that they're going to build uh, using this U1 chip. And they're hoping to expand this capacity and capability. And this is another one of those integrations, Will, that seems like only Apple can do it. This is one of the advantages to belonging within their world. The hardware-software integration not just an app, but an actual chip, this U1 chip. If you're an automaker, you see they come to you with the proposal. They say, look, you want to be on our ecosystem? And you say, okay, we're going to build it top to bottom. It's going to be secure, this and that. The automaker says, that sounds good to me. You're Apple. That's a friendly logo. Mm -hmm. Let's work together. If you're an Android manufacturer, maybe with the exception of Google... Who's, who's, who, who are rapidly attempting to be this hardware-software combination company. But if you're any other Android maker, you say, uh, we want to do this integrated deal. It's like, who are you? Yeah, well, it's like, it, hey, you're not... It, everything is not integrated to the level that we would be satisfied with. Mm -hmm. It's always some sort of a bolt-on thing. And that's what I like about Android, but it's also a disadvantage as many things in life, Will. Mm -hmm. Advantages, disadvantages. You want to have these types of opportunities, then you accept the uh, isolated experiences, the ones that are blocked off from everyone. You accept the iMessage scenario. You accept these things. I know you really want to show me this next clip here because this was this caught me off guard. This moment in the keynote, he's Whoa. flying. He flies up the stairs. You got to rewind that and give the people one more look at it. The way this edit works. So he's down below, and then the camera starts to pan. He's flying full speed. I think he's got a leather shoe on. So he's in shape. He's not wearing an Apple Watch, though. He gets some activity points or fitness points for that. I don't know. Where is his Apple Watch? Maybe he is. I would assume you'd have to have one. Another thing happened in his keynote. It was a lot of hands, by the way. I should mention the hands were going. He probably did the best job of the bunch, but the hands were higher 
than they would naturally be for a lot of presenters. Mm -hmm. I get the sense, uh, like I said, that there this was a bit uncomfortable for Apple given the fact that it's not normally the way they present. And I couldn't help but wonder how many takes for each one of these people in these positions. Overall, I think it was fine. I congratulate the group for uh, embarking on an endeavor that in this day and age is... You saw the disclaimer at the end with the masks and everything. Mm -hmm. And they seemed, I mean, maybe a little bit nervous or awkward here and there. But overall, I'm saying it's all, they had a lot more presenters than they would normally have. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think they did all right. But yes, of course, like anything else, when a group is trying to rapidly, quickly learn how to do new presentations, you're going to have this stuff happen. And obviously, I'm way too aware of it. Because yes. I'm on camera with the ranting and the raving yes. and the hands. You know firsthand. The hands yeah. you're constantly aware of.